In this video I collected some of the most popular questions that you posed in my videos, in the comments of my videos, since the creation of the Beatles Vocal Harmony channel, and I will try to answer them all. I'm receiving a lot of messages from musicians, Beatles tributes, producers, even writers lately about topics of common interest on the Beatles. Like for example, what is the singing range of these Beatles? Did George Barney help the Beatles craft in the harmonies? Uh, uh, what is the most difficult instrumental or singing part that you find yourself to break down? Is that of this hour tutorial accurate? And I decided to concentrate them on in a single video. So we'll talk about the Beatles history, we'll talk about the Beatles music, the Beatles singing, we'll play and sing also, and it's time to start this video. Let's start with the first question. So the first question I'm uh, most often asked is, uh, is that part accurate? Is that band accurate? Is that tutorial uh, accurate? Can you check it for me and, and let me know? But the answer is no, very rarely. The Beatles music has one characteristic that no other music has. These are uh, amazingly beautiful melodies crafted over uh, very complex uh, harmony patterns and arrangements. And the reason why they are so complex uh, is that they were built by an orchestra director, who was George Martin. So the Beatles parts are not played as everyone would. They are played with specific inversion of the chords, specific uh, white spaces, spaces where the instrument don't sound, specific strings and not other, and all sort of details that are typical of, uh, of the orchestra arrangement, of, of strings arrangement. Okay. Nonetheless, you can get a wonderful rendition of any Beatles song. If you play Oh Bloody Oh Bloody in front of two people, in front of a bottle of wine with your girlfriend, uh, or on the beach, you know, in front of a fire, and, or with a full-blown orchestra, or with a, um, um, the most skilled Beatles tribute. Whatever is the environment you're playing the Beatles music, is, you will always get an amazing rendition, with, which will give you an amazing enjoyment, both for you playing and for your audience. Still, there are different levels of difficulties in playing the Beatles. But one is, uh, as I said, are you playing the, par the parts accurately for what concerns the notes that you're playing? The second is, uh, are you playing them in the correct way on the instrument? Because moving the parts, moving the notes, even if they are, they are correct, along the neck of a guitar or a bass, there's a reason why Paul McCartney plays uh, a bulldog through, down, down the neck, over the nut, I mean, and not you know, in the middle of the fretboard of the bass. There is a reason. Uh, are you playing that in the correct inversions? Which, because this is an aspect, this is all, all uh, very underrated. Another um, question is, uh, and this is almost impossible to find somebody covering this, um, is uh, are you giving the right intention to the song? The Beatles songs are played in a very British way, very Anglo-Saxon way. Did you say Anglo-Saxon? Anglo-Saxon way. That means um, most of the time the, the, the notes and the vocals are lagging. And one of the greatest problems that I see in the, in the Beatles cover at whatever level, is that the people who play is that is, is, uh, uh, too f is playing too fast, is hurrying up the, the rhythm, is hurrying up the performance. And then there is the main matter of all, this, the, is the intention how, of how these parts are played. Let me make an example for you. I can play uh, or sing uh, um, You Gotta Hide Your Love Away, you know? But there's, there are dynamics in the song that have to be respected. You can really see this on the um, waveform of the song if you import it on a do, you know. And also there are lagging on the tempo. You have to lag on the tempo. So let's, for example, take um, "You Got to Hide Your Love Away." If you sing "You Got to Hide Your Love Away," you have to take care of dynamics and, and lagging on the tempo. Uh, on the tempo. So, for example. Uh, you sing it. Here I stand, head in hand, turn my face to the wall. If she 
she's gone I can't go on Feeling too for small And then you have some more push Everywhere people stare Each and every day The, the song starts to increase It's different than the first verse The first verse is uh, Here I stand head in hand The first second is Everywhere people stare Each and every day I can see them laugh at me that I'm lagging on the tempo, I'm delaying the singing in respect to the instrument. And I hear them sing. And then here goes a, a farther increase of the dynamic. Hey, you've got to hide your love away. More dynamics here as well. So you got the first verse. Six the second verse, seven and a half the first, the, then the refrain, eight and a half, and then the almost nine. And then again, after the refrain, you got this uh, drop down of the dynamics, so you got all this movement that catches your attention. No? Uh, Or take for example girl. Girl is an, an, another amazing example of this. Is there anybody going to listen to my story? All about the girl who came to stay. She's the kind of girl you want so much it makes you sorry. Okay, so this is all delayed, all lagged uh, compared to the instrumental part. So you have to take care of playing the correct notes, playing them in the correct position of the neck, okay? With the correct stuff, just like a capo, for example. And then the intention is very, very important, much more important, maybe more important than all the rest. But remember, the good news here is that you can absolutely perform a Beatles song thanks to the fact that these are amazing melodies, built over very complex harmony parts and arrangements, but they're amazing, beautiful melodies. You can perform these melodies with a full orchestra or a, the, 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 the most, you know, skilled Beatles tribute with a professional lineup, or with your girlfriend in front of a fire and, uh, and your friends, any audience you might have, no matter if they are 1,000 in front of you or two or three friends, you will get an amazing enjoyment in any way. This is the greatness of uh, Beatles music. Then, next question. Why did George always have the hardest parts? Okay, this is very simple. Paul obviously had to cover the highest vocals because he was the only tenor in the, in the band. And they usually, usually were pretty simple because they were some kind of parallel uh, vocals to the main melody. Then John had the main melody, most of the time because he was the composer of the first um, Beatles period songs. So he's got, he got the melody, the most simple part to sing, pull the high one. So what remained was George with the trickiest parts because most of the time, uh, especially for you know, um, songs like Yes It Is, for example, he had the lower part which was the most unpredictable in a way. The first two, the main two, the, the, the main melody and the upper part were most of the time almost parallel. But the low one to be fit with the two upper one, with the two main one, could be trickier. And the only one there to sing that was the poor George. So George had to do this. Did the vocal arrangement originate from the Beatles themselves or George Martin help them? This is another of the most um, popular questions that I am asked. Now consider this, when the Beatles first arrived in Hamburg, the first place where they played is, uh, was the Indra Club. There was a guy called uh, Odi Casey uh, playing with Daddy and the Seniors, who was playing the Kaiser Keller, the our club, an our club. This guy managed to uh, make a break and go to the Indra to uh, see the, the new guys arrived from Liverpool. 
and he released an interview later on and, and said, I went there, I, they were amazingly improved. And uh, we did some harmony together, but they were so good at it. But they were so good at it. Okay, so he was playing in a um, senior band and uh, he found them to be really good at harmonizing. That was happening three years after Paul and John met and two years before they got for the first time in Abbey Road. So when they got into Abbey Road, what happened was that George Martin found some 18 years old guys able to harmonize, which was not a common thing. And that was probably one of the things that stroke him in a way. You remember that that fact that happened when uh, the story about Norman Smith recording the first uh, aud audition for the Beatles and calling George Martin from upstairs. George Martin was probably uh, doing something else, maybe a coffee, drinking a coffee or a tea. And he, he put the interphone on and said, hey, come down because there's something going on here. What uh, Norman Smith probably wanted to point out to George Martin was the fact that these guys were singing in an amazing way and were harmonizing in an amazing way. So they were prepared to do that before they got into MB Road. The help that George Martin gave him, them uh, was huge for the instrumental parts and we will cover that in a different video. For what concerns the harmony, uh, he, he gave a, a, a very a pivotal help to them for what concerned refining the harmonies. So maybe they were able to create them by themselves because they rehearsed with these other three parts harmonies, just like to know her is to love her, and other tunes that they played uh, in Hamburg before they were signed by Parlophone. But what it did, it was uh, uh, refining the harmony. For example, let me make, let me make a, uh, an example. If they have parallel harmonies that were a bit, you know, you know common, they, uh, he came and, and tell them, change this note here and there, so they are oblique harmonies, for example. And what he did is making this harmony more catchy. The thing, to, for example, to uh, Nowhere Man, when he sings, uh, John sings, George sings, he's a real Nowhere Man. Not, it doesn't sing Nowhere Man, which will be parallel. You see, Nowhere Man. Okay, this makes a harmony, this makes tension in the harmony, which is more catchy. You, you bet that he did that in pretty all the harmonies that they proposed to him. So it, Brian Epson was the first to deliver us the Beatles. <clears throat> the main one to to give us this incredible opportunity to have them and josh martin was the next one absolutely absolutely i've been working on mccartney voice for a little while now but i'm not entirely happy with how it's sounding i'm comfortable i'm comfortable with the growly range i'm down or oh darling etc bravo but it's uh, the more gentle maccatone i would like to achieve any advice would be really helpful. Now, the, the, the main demonstration of how incredible is Paul McCartney's uh, technique in singing is probably a very thin, few microsecond uh, vocal contained in a famous video, the one of uh, David Frost's A. Jude performance. Well, before he starts, Paul starts singing, you can hear him singing the first line of the song, Hey you this way, and, th and there you really understand how great it was. It was a friend of mine to lead me to this. Really, you can understand how great it was. It was the ability of uh, uh, padroneggiare, come si può dire, mastering his, uh, um, his singing, you know, being able to perform a perfect singing line even with, with, with the volume of, uh, you know, a uh, mosquito, you know, a very low, incredibly low volume. So he's able to sing uh, very hard, just like, for example, in um, <coughs> Uh, why don't we do it in the road? 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 And then you can see the very, very sub subtle um, whispering 
tones, just like for example in uh, uh, Born a boy, young country boy. He's got a 1,000 voices. There was a study that demonstrates that he, 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 only Ian Prince got this incredibly wide uh, range. But it's not just the, uh, the wide vocal range, it's just how Paul is able to put his voice in the mouth here and there to reproduce a variety of tones that are incredible. One of the most incredible abilities of the, of the Beatles for what concerns the vocals is the ability of uh, uh, singing parts that uh, for anyone would require a huge volume with a very soft volume. They seem to be very loud, but if you had them in front of you, you will hear just the average volume, not that loud, you know. This is typical of the part uh, that Paul uh, sings in If I Felt, for example, or the, his part in uh, um, The Harmony of This Boy. Now, I have a video that I have to finish and every now and then some, somebody's moaning about that because I didn't uh, post it uh, until now, that, um, where I will cover all these different techniques and, and will try to show them to you so you can, in a way, in a way be able to reproduce them um, with me. Okay, so let's be patient until I post this video and then we'll go through all the details of how Paul uh, sings, sings and all these different uh, singing techniques. How do you get the harmonies like you do? You just hear them or what's the method? I do everything by ear because to this date there's no software that allows you to perfectly separate the vocals that were originally sang on one single microphone with Paul on one side and John on the other side or the, the three of them around the microphone. Consider that I'm very accustomed to do this because uh, it's, since I was very very young I remember that in, my, in the dining room when I was about 15, I'm now 56, uh, when I was about 15, uh, 15 my dad and mom uh, had a, a, one of these uh, uh, record players, old 60s style design record players with their legs, you know, very, very, very nice design. They have this one in the dining room and, and this record player had two speakers and I used to uh, lay down supine on the floor and instead of studying, I passed my afternoons supine on the floor with these two speakers put aside of my ears, one on the right and one on the left, uh, as headphones and singing over the Beatles with, with the Beatles and um, uh, Beatles for Say, Hardest Night, Please Please Me, and sing over those songs, harmonizing with them and even inventing more uh, vocals that were not present in the original recording. What I do is uh, I take the song and uh, I got a software called Transcribe that allows me to um, reproduce the song at the lower speed by maintaining the key. So what happens is that I hear the, I listen to a part of the song, I take single parts, you know, and uh, start with a part of the song. And when I first hear and listen to that part of the song, I close my eyes and when, what I see is that, um, just like the old analog TV, you know, remember, maybe you remember, uh, where they are not linked, connected to do any channel, you know? tuned. tuned, where we're not tuned to any channel. There was this noise, you know, this mass of noise, white noise. And then the more I listen to that, the more I see the harmonies showing off just like threads. There must be some kind of strange guy inside me. So like threads warms, it's like warms, so they become the more and more undefined uh, as long as I intercept them, you know? And this is how I do them, I see them and I, I just have to follow them. When, once I found them, when, once they show me, they are shown to me, I just follow them. And uh, um, if some parts, for example, some parts of the harmony are not correct or I can detect them. I improvise over them because I have an experience, I have trained a lot on this and most of the time by training, trying my own notes of where I can't find the original one, I got them and uh, then I recognize them. I know it may sound a bit tricky but this is how it happens, you know. Other times when the harmonies are very complex, I have to record them and compare them to the original. 
And most of the time what I discover is that there are even farther details that I ignored. That was, for example, the case of um, uh, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, which I thought was diamonds are sliding, but it's not sliding, it's three notes. Diamonds, diamonds, and Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. So the three parallel harmony where the beat that John and Paul sang uh, three notes in a quarter of a second, okay? But that's Totally amazing, totally amazing, totally amazing. So I hope I answered this question. Next one. I see your videos as the leading authority on the Beatles harmony. Thank you. And I feel very fortunate to have your videos as a resource. You're very welcome. I was wondering, do you plan on making more videos that show the vocal harmony to have a complete catalog of the Beatles songs? Yes, uh, some of, uh, of you mm, maybe uh, notice that I stopped making the harmony, the vocal harmony videos for a few years. This was because uh, there was a time when YouTube uh, changed the um, algorithm and there was some kind of privacy setting change. I have some of them ready. I have please, uh, I have uh, PS I Love You, Good Day Sunshine, Taxman already. John Taxman is fantastic. I plan to make them all and I already, I recently posted the Junk by Paul McCartney, a song that I absolutely love with my girlfriend, Rafaela. You can check uh, this out in the channel. Okay, yes, I will do that. Amazing Sgt. Pepper video. But if my Beatles Tribune band wanted to play this, which harmony would we leave out since there's four of us and there's five harmonies? Okay, first consider that the main harmonies for Sgt. Pepper are three. But well, there is the... There is the, the main melody. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely House Club Band. This one can be performed in a special way that I'm going to tell you in a second. Then you have the upper melody, which is uh, uh, Paul's pedal. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely House Club Band. We hope you will enjoy the show. And then you have the lower harmony, the teacher's one, given most probably to Joe, which is Sergeant Pepper's Lonely House Club Band. We hope you will enjoy the show. Okay, if you play these three ones, you, you will get an amazing result. The trick here is that you can double with the farther member you have here of the band, you can double the main melody and this will give you a double tracking effect with, that will give you an amazing uh, rendition of amazing uh, result that will really be enjoyable really really enjoyable the trick of doubling the melody i recommend all of you playing beatles tribute all of you sing the part with two vocalists because all, mainly all the beatles tracks in the beginning were um, double tracked so you you will get uh, a very a result that is very similar to the original recording. Disregard the fact that there was one Paul, one John, sing the two of us, okay? May I ask if there are any videos in the past you, uh, you did that had mistakes? For example, the first that I made, No More Man, I had to remake them because it had a mistake. Uh, in the part that uh, uh, concerned George, I think to remember, I seem to remember, it was a, a little mistake. Averagely, when I make a mistake, I redo the videos because to me it's not a matter of how many views I have. To me, the main thing is you have to be able to enjoy play the videos, and this is the fantastic democracy of the YouTube. You are the judge. If a video is out for one year and nobody complained about it, it's most probably correct, you know? This is fantastic. Basically, 99.9% .9 periodic of the vocals are correct, the notes are correct, so you will perfectly be able by listening, listening to these videos of mine to reproduce the harmonies perfectly. I may have uh, maybe uh, inverted some of the roles of who's singing what, you know, maybe I assigned this vocal to George and it was John because most of the time they are buried into very uh, complex groove of instrumental parts and um, and vocal parts so it's very difficult to detect them and especially very difficult to detect who's singing what so they are all okay, you just maybe have to uh, 
uh, review which was singing what, but this is not important for you. You just get the notes and you sing, okay? Do you believe that there will be some truth that Paul McCartney was replaced by Billy Shears? No, no way. McCartney's ability to uh, sing and composing uh, are impossible to equal. In the next two, three centuries, nobody will uh, ever remember Coldplay or U2, but Paul McCartney will be remembered as Mozart or as Beethoven is now. So there's no way that you ha can have two in five years, okay? There's no way at all. No way that you can find even someone singing that way. He's got 1,000 voices. He can sing like a CDC, he can sing like Marian Faithful, he can sing like a Pavarotti, he can sing whatever, okay? Even metal. Okay? That's not true, absolutely. It's a very good marketing idea. The proof is that it's, it um, is uh, still to these days, is working still to these days. I found myself watching uh, the national uh, program on this, on this subject on the national Italian TV some years ago, a few years ago. And it was a very sad thing because they were showing photos of McCartney uh, just like uh, before and after that were really distorted and skewed. I can use very well Photoshop. I am very good at editing with Photoshop, so I can re immediately detect if a photo is distorted, you know. And what was very sad, very, very sad thing, the, the saddest thing was that these so-told experts showing these photos were Italians. Not a good thing. Another question. Hi there, I'm from Australia and I love your videos. Thank you. Your most recent video of Hey Jude the cover blew me away. It was truly amazing how accurately you pulled that off. As a musician myself, I caught my eyes to see you using the, what looks like an original AKG C30A microphone. Yeah. Where did you get them and are they original AKG C30 microphone? Keep up the incredible work, Kendrick Al Harvey. You won't believe that, but I built this microphone by myself. I have a company that I rely on when it's, um, when it's uh, up to build the um, craft, the invention that I made for my job. I'm a luthier. So uh, I have this microphone built. I took some photos, I designed them, and then I took them to this company of friends and they crafted them for me. For this video, I tried to reproduce the exact original David Frost show set. So we got the Epiphone Casino for John Spot, we got the uh, Fender uh, Six Bass Baritone Guitar, we got the Fender Blakeface um, Deluxe uh, Amp. Uh, I also found a piano that was uh, uh, really looking like the Challenge piano that they had in Abbey Road. It was buried in a shop, I, I eventually got there. It was buried in a shop, in a, in a, in a mess of junk there. And uh, there was a piano with that, with that size, the shape of the original or something very similar. So we tried to reproduce that and this microphone were built on, you know, for, the, for this occasion specifically. Next one is another very popular uh, question. What is the singing range of each Beatles? This is a subject of another video that I almost finished. I will edit and mount it uh, and post it uh, very soon. You can say that Paul is a tenor. Paul is what is the opera, the uh, Italian opera definition is called a, a tenore di forza. But he can also sing very, very, very low. I will give you all the exact notes of each song in that video that I'm preparing and you won't believe what I found. For what concerns uh, George and John, you can address them to be, ten, uh, to be baritones or upper baritones despite the fact that John and, St and also George could actually sing some very high notes. A Ringo, uh, everybody thinks he's got a very low voice, low in terms of pitch and voice, but it's not. Um, he can really sing just, just like in the lower register of uh, the baritone uh, voice. Maybe Ringo has got more problems with keeping the notes rather than reaching the pitch. For example, the last notes of With a Little Help from My Friends, it's not a matter for him to reach in that note. He had some difficulties, you remember, but it was not a matter of reaching the note. It was a matter to 
of keeping this knot so long, sustaining this knot for so long. I think he had some uh, um, pulmonic ditch lungs, lung, lung, lungs problems when he was very, very young, you know. We cover that in, in the very details of each uh, single vocal range of each single beat in a dedicated video very soon. Okay, there's a group of questions that, uh, about the same subject. Do you still have the premiums you posted a while back? How can I assess the how two videos that you did? What microphone did you use on it? There are different levels of premiums that I offer to kind people who want, want to support this channel by donating. These range from a PDF uh, about a book that I'm writing to a full three full videos of all the equipments that I use containing a description of all the equipments that I use for recording and recreating the Beatles vocals and instrumental parts and also uh, two videos of how I use it, so a demonstration of how I use it. You can find everything in the link here that I'm posting uh, of my donation page, okay? You sometimes say there's a further harmony here and there but it's so low to be almost inaudible and you decide not to, not to include it. I always want to hear those harmonies since I would like to start making songs uh, about the Beatles. Uh, okay, if I disregard a vocal in a in Beatles harmony, this was because in the scope of the harmony, that harmony wasn't absolutely pivotal, wasn't absolutely important. It was so low that you can't uh, really detect it. It was not contributing in, a, in any way to the groove of the harmony. So uh, this is why sometimes I uh, disregard some of the harmonies. So if I disregard them, you can also dis uh, disregard them. Sam asks, I was wondering if you ever consider a write out on sheet the music, uh, the Beatles harmonies that, that you teach in your videos. A few years ago, I started with a friend in Ukraine uh, to make a, um, a series of books on this. And uh, we are hanging out not frequently, but we are, and we are having a lot of fun doing this because we, this guy is so amazingly nice and clever. Until now, we covered the first two LPs, so Please Please Me and With The Beatles. Next one will be Hardest Night, and when we finish Hardest Night, we will, uh, you know, have a complete book and we will put it out. Then we will go free by free with the other albums. So, Yes, I'm doing this and uh, it will take some time because it's a very um, tricky and a long time um, taking is a very difficult task, but I, I will do this. Absolutely. It's on, the, it's on the way. I can't achieve the tone and brightness that the Beatles have in their voices. I use Logic Pro X. Uh, a greeting, a greeting to you. So the matter of the brightness in the Beatles vocals is not only a matter of how they recorded them. And for the recording and all the recording texts, you have these premiums that I just told you about for the donation. If you are so kind to support this uh, channel, I will provide you with all the equipment you need to reproduce perfectly, reproduce at home this kind of tone. But you also have to put yourself into the game. You have to open your mouth, look and go to the Melbourne concert a performance of You Can Do That, sang by John. You can find it here on, on YouTube. Not now, with the, the video now. But uh, if you go there, you will see him singing. Well, there's something to say that might you pain if I catch you. With the hugely open mouth. Oh, yeah, I can. Okay, so opening your mouth is a very, very important part of the brightness of, of your vocals. Hope, open your mouth. And then, when I will be posting that video on uh, the vocal singing text of Paul McCartney, we will cover also this kind of things. But remember, use this kind of microphone, condenser microphones. But remember, open your mouth hugely and you will achieve a much better bright sound when you sing. This is one of the most important things. My name is Igor from Brazil. Do you record beat on inspired vocal tracks for producers and writers? Yes, I regularly do this for artists and arranger, arrangers and producers. They usually send me an instrumental track and a lead vocal track, which I mix on my dough, and then I uh, create a harmony on, on, on their lead vocals. 
So I, I make the whole arrangement, the harmony arrangement of the song throughout the whole structure of the song. And then I deliver the separate tracks from them to learn them on their own and then record them. Yes, I can do this. And if you are in need of this, you can ask. Have you done a tutorial on the guitar for a one hold your hand or is there any existing tutorial you think is particularly accurate? To this day, and it's uh, a Sunday, the 21st of March, 2021, there's no accurate tutorial on a one hold your hand online that you can uh, see. The guitar of one hold your hand is played in a specific way uh, and all these tutorials miss, are missing something. So we will cover this and it will be an hour of the next video that I will make. Furthermore, the guitar arrangement has a sense of its own. There is an um, interlacing between the the guitar that John played and a baritone a, a tuned guitar that George plays. So it's, it will be a very interesting video, also not only for the guitar part, but also for the arrangement uh, crafting point of view. I'm wondering if you are planning on breaking down harmonies for other groups and posting them on your website on YouTube. This is a series of questions about the same thing. Do we have intention of breaking down harmonies from Pink Floyd, for BGs, for uh, Beach Boys? And the answer is no. No, because breaking down these harmonies is a very time spending task. And uh, making a video is even more time spending and uh, editing it. Uh, it's a very hard work. Maybe the Everly Brothers. I will do the Everly Brothers because they are historically very important for the Beatles. What is your actual job? I'm working in different domains. Different domains. Uh, mainly I'm a luthier. I have built about 400 guitars and basses, electric guitars and basses, some acoustics um, for a lot of musicians, worldwide artists, even Italian artists, mainly Italian artists. I don't build guitars anymore, I just build one or two every year for very passionate customers. Since 2010 I have a guitar uh, making school where I teach repairing and building uh, electric guitars, electric guitars mainly. I am also a 25 experienced communication specialist. I work f as a consultant for companies, even if I don't advertise this job because it happens on the spread word uh, mainly, but uh, I do some quite a lot of consulting for companies on sales mainly and customer care but I also coach uh, entrepreneurs to reach their goals. I like working with people and reaching people and taking people to the place where we want to go, having them reaching their goals. That's, my, that's what moves me. I help people and entrepreneurs to uh, focus uh, clearly focus on where they want to go and uh, take them, help them get in there. This is what I like to do, helping people getting better and reaching something. Not reaching money, reaching something that they want to. Do you sing in coffee houses? I think this guy is referring to a video where I uh, play with my ex bedmate in a, in, a, um, in a coffee house, in fact. It was a bar. Uh, I used to have a Beatles tribute and uh, uh, we played in the back of this, uh, we rehearsed, used to rehearse in the back of this um, coffee house and one day I, I, I told him, okay, let's make a video where we show the harmonies of uh, the harmony of If I Fell and this video has got some kind of 900,000 um, views now and it's very uh, it was a very appreciated video. So I think you're referring to this one. It was not that I play in coffee houses. I, I play almost everywhere in my life. I played live for 20 years, maybe 30. But uh, this one was a place where we were rehearsing. I have a very, very good time. Very good time. But incredible, incredible. Can you read music? No, I can't. Something in my brain refuses to memorize things that I don't like. It's just a force inside myself that say, they say mm, mm, mm. The Beatles never were able to read music and that was an incredible fluke because they found George Martin. So it was the best of both worlds. The wildest creativity ever, the Beatles, and the best sculpture of all the uh, orchestra directors that was George Martin. It was an incredible uh, stroke of luck. Yes, I know, I can't read music. Are you ever going to do how to sing a cover of Yesterday? 
And I saw a video of you, uh, how to sing like Paul McCartney, this is the famous video, I'm not going to be beaten in my head. Are you ever going to upload the video on tips on how to sing like him? I will, I promise. But first, I have bought a series of uh, equipments that will allow me to broadcast in a way different sources, audio, video and speak over. So I will definitely start very soon a new series of videos where we will concentrate on studying the songs on a vocal point of view. So the vocals of Blackbird, the vocals of Yesterday, The Long Winding Road, I Should Have Known Better, Hardest Night, whatever it is, whatever it is. So uh, get ready for a new series of videos where we'll learn each single song, including, of course, Yesterday. About yesterday, I plan to make one of the next videos that I'm planning to make is as I did for Blackbird, all the hidden secrets uh, contained in the crafting of the arrangement of the acoustic guitar of yesterday. This will be an amazing video, amazing video, surprising one. This makes you wonder how many Johns are working around right now, living humdrum life because they have made the wrong move or didn't get the right break or weren't at the right place at the right time. Makes you think, doesn't it? Yeah, makes you think. Would this mug you passed on the street today be a legend if the star had aligned little differently years ago? Yeah. <clears throat> I have known a lot of very talented people that are closing their room and nobody knows about them. One of the one most incredible one I met was a friend of mine for a long time since he died. Massimo Raitano. You can't find anything about him because it was a time when there was no internet and anything. And um, the, this guy was amazing, you know. <clears throat> when you met one of these guys, you, you, you clearly understand that there is a chance that you meet one every 100 years, 50 years. These are incredible person. <clears throat> if he ever uh, born in uh, England or United States, he would probably be a massive rock star. Yes, there are chances, not that much, but there are chances that you um, have met somebody on the street that in another world, in another reality is a, a rock star, would be a rock star. But remember that to be a rock star, you have to have an incredible talent, but mainly you have to be very resilient, resilient and have a method and, have, and stay concentrated on the task. The master of this ability is Paul McCartney, which is the hugest talent ever happened on earth for what concerns musically speaking. Together with the managing uh, abilities, together with the ability of uh, keeping the focus but with the ability of uh, getting there, still keeping myself always tuned with the people he's working with, which is the real difference, the real difference. Is Paul McCartney aware of you? Uh, has he met you? I think he would be delighted to know uh, you and everything that you uh, do related to the Beatles and all music. Uh, have you ever been contacted? There are different uh, questions of the same subject. Have you ever been contacted by Believing Beatles? No, I've never been contacted by Paul and Ringo. They are aware of me. Yes, of course they are. They are aware of me. They are aware of Andrew Lubman and all the uh, Ryohi Kanayama, all the others vloggers that are in, so in love with the Beatles music. and. Uh, uh, create are creating contents to allow you to uh, reproduce uh, and enjoy the Beatles music. Of course, they are. It's impossible that they didn't see any of the Beatles vocal harmony video or any of the Beatles of my friends. I think this question hides something like, did they ever recognize you, uh, the job that you made? Also consider that uh, 12 years ago when I started the Beatles uh, vocal harmony channel, there were a very handful of Beatles tribute. This was because uh, only the pros could had the ability of breaking down the vocals, not knowing the harmonies, the complex harmonies that are, uh, which the, the music, uh, the visual music is filled of. 
prevented a lot of people to um, create Beatles tributes. Since uh, um, the vocal, Beatles Vocal Harmony came out, all the videos that I made available uh, gave to those people um, the ability of recreating the harmony. So there was an explosion of Beatles tributes band. Now there are thousands, I don't know, maybe millions, I don't know. I'm sure that the guys know, but if you think that this is something that they should be um, grateful for, you don't know the Beatles. The Beatles were not fanful guys, they are famous, uh, there are a lot of stories about they um, never thanked even George Martin of Gelf Emmerich, the, the, the technicians, the, the sounding in Europe, Abbey Road, that maybe waited for them for hours and hours, they didn't even show up. If you know the Beatles, you are, you're perfectly know that you never get any recon recognition from them. And that's not the matter. I didn't make this for Paul McCartney. I did this for you to be able to feel the amazing enjoyment that you have when you are able to reproduce a Beatles song, a Beatles harmony, a Beatles part correctly. When you finally understand that you are able to reproduce this song just like you heard it since a long, long time. That was my goal, not having Paul McCartney thank me. It will never happen, okay? Let's now go to the most trivial questions. I watched your videos from many years ago and I'm surprised to see how little you age. Mind telling you secret. My secret is uh, listen to the Beatles, only to the Beatles and nothing else, as I do. I don't listen to the radio, I don't listen to the Pink Floyd because I get depressed. And that's the, the diet, that's my diet. You have to let the, the Beatles enter your life. The inner light of the Beatles enter your life is a difficult task because you really have to be inspired to do this. It's a kind of vocation, a vocation you say in English, I don't know. But you have to, and if you do that, you will stay young forever. You don't have to kill the curious child that you, you have in yourself, you know? You have to be curious. If, if somebody tells you there's a donkey flying out there, you have to have the attitude to say, really? Let's see, okay? The attitude of everything is possible, okay? This is the Beatles teaching, the Beatles uh, inner light. Are you Croatian? No, I'm Italian and proud to be. But most of the people think that I speak like Borat, so probably I'm Croatian. How did you start the Beatles Vocal Harmony channel? That was an idea that I had since a long time, but you know, the Beatles are the Beatles. So if you put yourself in the condition to um, teach the Beatles worldwide in a, in, a, in a platform, just like YouTube, I was a bit shy to do that. And um, it happened as many things concerning me at the Beatles. It happened for a case, was sort of fate. I was in a studio and I was recording um, an instrument, a, a song of mine for a, to be sang by a US artist. And um, the guy of the studio knew that I had a, a play, was playing in a Beatles tribute. So he, he stopped and during a pause he said, uh, would you mind teaching me the harmonies of uh, uh, Nowhere Man? And I said, listen, I, it's a bit late and we have to finish the job here. Would you mind if I do that the next, tomorrow? And he said, okay, that's okay. So the next day I had to switch my um, old PC with the Cubase and Reason. It, you know, it's primordial. It took 10 minutes to switch on. So I was trying to find a way to do this very uh, fast and um, in a quick way. So. I had a camcorder, a very small camcorder I used with the band to uh, record the rehearsals. And I said, rather than switching on the PC, I can record myself here. I will, it will take two minutes. So I did a video instead of recording an MP3 file and send it to him and send the video to him. Then after watching the video, uh, I, I noticed it was not bad. You know, I said, it's not bad. And this is how I found the nerve to do that. I watch a video, I say, okay, this can be something that will help people to enjoy the Beatles and help people to play them and sing them. I posted on YouTube and this made of some kind of 200,000 views in a few months, three months, something like that. It was a huge uh, success. And this is how I started you know, the whole channel. Then a lot of videos came. Uh, and you know what? The, the original video, as I said, was wrong. I had to remake this one. There was a, a little uh, mistake in George part.
Are you going to upload any more improve your singing videos? I passed the last five years studying Paul McCartney's vocal techniques and uh, every now and then I found some tricks that uh, I learned some tricks with, even with the help of coach uh, of a coach and I, I found some tricks that might be helpful indeed um, especially on how to go to higher notes you know uh, where he uses for example uh, let me make an example uh, honey pie one of I had the difficulty to sing was honey pie you are making me crazy I'm in love but I'm lazy you are driving me frantic you are making me crazy this kind of noise um, but I, I require some techniques to reach because you tend to strain your vocals and these, these are tricks that I would like to yes to teach because, because this might be very helpful to perform different kinds of songs not, not only the Beatles so yes maybe it will happen that I will do more of uh, um, improve your singing videos so we are at the end of this video uh, I hope you enjoyed it uh, and I hope I covered all the main questions that you might have you have the comments here below to post more questions if some have remained unanswered. Remember to hit the bell button if you want to be notified when more videos are out to subscribe and support this channel for more videos. So thanks a lot for staying with me and see you next one. Ciao, bye.